Win a Pageant, Episode 27, Part 1. Do you need some high-paying pageant sponsors? I want to teach you how I got $3,000 from one sponsor. You can sign up for free at GetPageantSponsors.com. See you there. Hi, winners. Welcome to another episode of Win a Pageant. I'm your coach, Alicia Darby, and today I want to break down how much pageants actually cost. Because you may have heard that pageants can be very expensive, but winning a pageant really does not have to absolutely break the bank. So in this episode, I'm going to break down the costs of pageants, and I'm going to share with you what you should focus your finances on and what elements of pageantry are really just the extras. So there are three ways to do anything, the cheap way, the expensive way, and the right way. Now, you don't have to have lots and lots of money in order to do it the right way, and nor are all of the cheap ways wrong. There really is a balance to strike. So my goal in this episode is to share with you my opinion of what I believe works best, what's worked for me and what's worked for my clients. Plus, I want to give you several budgeting tips to actually help you save some money. What I am really hoping to help you avoid is post-pageant buyer's remorse. When you compete in a pageant and you spend just tons and tons and tons of money, when you're just spending money, spending money, spending money, then at the end of the pageant, especially if you don't win the pageant, but even sometimes if you do win the pageant, this sets in post-pageant buyer's remorse. And when it sets in, it is really painful because it's hard to undo all of those expenses. So The best way to avoid that is before you even start to think about what you want to spend your resources on, so your time and your efforts and your money and your energies on, first, create a goal. So really consider what do you want to get out of this pageant experience? Now, my first pageant ever was more of a bucket list check mark. So I really just wanted to compete. I didn't really care to win, although I would have gratefully accepted it. Uh, But that really wasn't the initial point for me. So instead, I choreographed a really cool new dance to perform as my talent. I like laughed through all of the rehearsals with the other girls. I really had a great time. And I rewore my prom dress for evening gown. (laughs) And I put in some time for rehearsals for my dance and stuff. And, And of course, for the pageant production. But that's really it. Now, I did not win, but I did check off my bucket list that I'd competed in a pageant. So I was happy. My goal was accomplished. The second pageant that I competed in, my goal for that was I really just wanted to dance in front of a huge audience. So the pageant was held at a grandstand with like 2,000 seats. So I choreographed one of the coolest dances, really even that I've ever choreographed since then. I practiced it close to about 10 hours a week just that one performance. And I I did enjoy all of our rehearsals with the other contestants. I nailed my talent every single time I performed it at a rehearsal. And then I borrowed my entire wardrobe, except for about $45 that I spent on an interview suit from JCPenney's. Now, the interesting twist to this story is that about five days before the actual pageant competition, I decided that it wasn't just about the dance anymore. I actually wanted to win that pageant. So in those final about five days, I was like psycho focused at rehearsals. I started asking my parents for any information that they had on current events so I could catch up in the last like five years of politics. (laughs) And shockingly, I actually won. Uh, Now, I continued to compete for years because of the scholarship dollars. So that became my new goal uh, was gaining scholarship money. And then I started to realize that my impact could actually be really far, far larger if I were to actually win the pageant. So when I decided that it was finally time to start winning these pageants I was competing in, when that became my goal, my entire strategy changed. I actually started using a budget. And I'm actually going to review that with you on this episode today because I want you to see how I really broke it down and what I put my value in and what were the areas that I was like, meh, this I don't need to worry about, you know? So this episode is for the woman who wants to win the pageant and the woman who knows that life will not end after the day of the pageant. So it's not like you're going to spend 20 
thousand dollars, which some many, in fact, many women do. And then the end of the pageant comes and like you never have to pay that stuff back, you know, or the end of the pageant comes and you automatically win just because of how. No, it doesn't work like that. Okay, so I'm looking in this episode to touch the women who want to win and to understand life goes on. Okay, so listen up. Let's dive into this budget. So I have a list of about 25 things that I want you to consider, and I'd like to touch on each one of them. We start, of course, in budgeting. You start with the entry fee and the expenses related to the actual pageant. Now, some pageants don't even have entry fees at all, so it's $0. Now, that those are pretty nice too, but there are some that are on the high end, and they might be $2,000 or more. In my experience, most pageants are anywhere from 1000 to about $1,500. Now, the entry fee is what you're paying for to actually compete in the pageant. Usually, this includes some adventures during pageant week, or it will include certain in-kind gifts. Uh, You may even be paying for a cocktail dress or for your earrings or something like that as a part of your entry fee. So that is the first, very, very first thing that you want to consider because that may even already, if you're paying $1,500 and the pageant is like one day and you're not getting anything out of it and even the winner doesn't win anything, then that is not a pageant that I would recommend competing in. What you want to look for in your entry fee is what are you getting out of the experience? So for example, if this entry fee covers a photo shoot where you get to keep the photos during the actual pageant time, that's awesome because you're going to be paying for your hair and your makeup and your spray tan and all these other things to prepare you and your wardrobe and la-di-da. So that type of photography could be really, really beneficial for you. Maybe you are going to be paying an entry fee, but then the pageant is several days long and you're going to be doing lots of enjoyable things. Maybe you're visiting cool places in the area, uh, things like that. That would be another reason to enter a pageant with a high entry fee. Okay. So first line item, entry fee. The second thing is what might be considered the mandatory program ad or platform page or sponsorship or whatever. So oftentimes pageants will have a mandatory program advertisement. Now it is really important to pay attention to these types of things because when the pageant is saying that something is mandatory, it's generally because it is something that is very valuable to the pageant itself. So it is a value of the pageant. If that is something that is not a value of yours, or it just totally misaligns with you, then again, not a pageant you want to compete in. Now, if it's just too much money, well, then, you know, we're going to talk about how to get sponsors. I don't want you to worry about that at all. Okay. Don't let the budget, let me say this too, don't let your budget overwhelm you. Okay. Instead, you want to treat it like a professional would. You want to help, allow it to help you to prepare. With that said, I'm going to give you my first tip. Tip number one is that your budget, all of these pageant expenses could be paid by yourself as the contestant. And that might also include your family and friends, you know, so it could be that you and your husband are partnering together with this. It could be your parents are helping you. So that's thing one. It could also be paid with pageant winnings. So especially in terms of an entry fee or in the program advertisement, things like that. Sometimes if you win a local or a state pageant, they will pay for your entry fee to the national pageant or for the program ad books, things like that. So oftentimes the pageant winnings may also pay for this. That would be considered a sponsorship through your pageant. And then finally, pageant sponsors. So this could be in-kind gifts or it could be financial gifts. Now, if you are like totally confused or you don't know anything about pageant sponsors or you've never actually gotten a pageant sponsor and you're wondering how to do that, you're in luck because I am hosting a free workshop tomorrow actually and you can sign up for it at Get pageantsponsors.com. This is going to teach you how to get high paying pageant sponsors at no matter what level you are. Okay. It's really, really an intensive to give you that understanding. So, okay. So we've already covered entry fee. We covered the mandatory program ad book. Now the program ad book might be $0. Oftentimes, pageants will say, if you sign up for our pageant before such and such deadline, then you get a program ad for free. Now that is awesome. People love that. On on the high end, I've even seen 
program advertisements for $1,000, for $600. My recommendation to you is budget to spend about $250 because that's really like the average. And, and they can be even as low as $100. I mean, they are really all over the place. It depends on what type of pageant. If you're competing in Miss America, then of course, it's going to be far, far more expensive than it would be if you were competing in either a lesser known pageant or one that's more well supported financially. Okay, the next two things, I'm going to um, consider them as different light items because I want you to consider them as different, but they have the same sort of concept, and that is the platform page design and the sponsors ad design. So when you have a platform for your pageant, oftentimes they will include this in the program booklet. So they'll have your your headshot, and they'll have you know some words about your platform or something. That needs to be professionally designed because if you just kind of throw something up there, it's not going to have the same type of impact that it would if a professional designer were really doing it for you. And the same is true of the sponsor's ad design. Now, sometimes you can get your sponsors to pay for this. Sometimes the pageant will pay for it altogether, as I mentioned before. And other times you are expected to do it on your own, to have it designed on your own. I have seen people even charge $500 for platform page designs, and that totally blows my mind. I mean, I cannot even imagine spending $500 on a piece of paper, a design of all things, right? So here's what I've done, and here's what I recommend that you do, is go back to your specific pageant search through the platform ad pages from others who have done very well and ones that you just like, you know, typically this is not something that's judged. Although if it's not quality work, it will not be seen well. So it's definitely something that you want to consider. What I did when I was competing is I would create a general design. So it would be something that I really liked. So I would kind of give a little outline or a sketch and then you could either hire somebody to do it for you you could hire a professional. Maybe there's somebody local in your area that would be willing to help you with this. Or what I've done is go to, now here's tip number two for you, fiverr.com. If you've never heard of Fiverr, you want to write it down. It's five, like the number five. Fiverr, the slogan of this website is what people will do for five bucks. And what I've done is I have hired several different designers. I've given each of them that it's cost $5 and then maybe 50 cents or so as like a fee, you know, for the site itself. So you hire several different designers, you give them all the same instructions, and then you see what they come back with. You're going to like elements of some and elements of another, and then you're going to kind of like this one over here. Rarely do you get it back and it's perfect in the first try. So then from there, you can screenshot, screen capture things and kind of pull it together and then give it to your favorite designer. You might end up paying them five more dollars. So this thing might cost you, for me, I spent about $25, five here, five here, five here. Another way of doing this is to create it yourself. One resource that I absolutely love, which is free, this is tip number three for you, canva.com, C-A-N-V-A.com. Canva.com is where you can design your own designs for free. You can drop images in there. You can change font and text and move it all around and add in really whatever you want. It's a really, really great alternative, especially to that $500 design. Now, there may be other mandatory elements of your pageant, so you want to consider those too and go ahead and write them down as line items. Now, I know we've really only just scratched the surface, and I have for you four other major areas of your budget that I want you to consider, but we're going to dive into all of those things in next week's part two of this episode. So please come back and join us there because I've got so many more tips for you for budgeting because that, ladies, is how you win a pageant. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I'll see you next week. Hey there, I'm Alicia Darby, and I just want to say thank you so much for watching that last video. If you totally loved it and got something from it, would you just click subscribe right here to subscribe to our YouTube channel? Hey, I am here for you, and I've got so many more trainings and videos for you. In fact, this one would be a really great one to watch next. Or if that topic doesn't interest you, then try this one. It's my most recent video training. So I think both of these would be really great for you. Thank you again so much for subscribing. I am honored to be your coach. I'll see you again soon.